Good afternoon, and I'm hoping I find you well on this first day of June, guys. Where has the time gone? <laughs> um, obviously, the time has really come, um, you know, so that we actually start checking our balances and see where we are headed to within the year of our Lord 2017. Ray Ring, how's it going, man? So this marks the halfway mark of the year. And it's that time of the year that you start asking yourself, where have I been? What have I done? Am I heading towards where I wanted to go to in 2017? I don't know if you've been asking yourself those questions, but I sure have been within my business. And Zane, how's it going, my man? Um, obviously, this is now the halfway mark of 2017, and I would have been drunk somewhere um, at the beginning of the year, and I was making my New Year resolutions and going on about how I was probably going to make a million dollars, how I was going to make so and so happy, how I was going to have achieved so much within the year, but... Have you taken notice or have you taken stock of where you are right now and in relation to what you promised yourself, um, you know, at the beginning of the year? So this is the time of that year when rubber meets the road and you really, really got to start looking at where am I going? What's working? What's not working? Because time is not waiting for anybody. All right. I'm saying this because this is also the time that we revamp and, you know, reconstruct our clients. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, campaigns, just in case that we're not hitting the mark or we're not actually doing the right thing, all right? So if you haven't really started looking at your projections, what you've done so far, where you're headed, this is the time for reflection because this is the halfway mark, okay? Because when you started the year, you promised yourself you were going to do this, you promised your company you were going to do a lot more things, but have you achieved at least half of those things by now? Zena says, of course, business I expect. I do not have a business, but I have a journey to accomplish. Well, obviously, you would have given yourself projections to say by 2017, I want to have achieved this. Um, I want to have, you know, done this in my life. And this is now halfway through the year. You want to take stock and see if that has come to fruition. All right. So whatever your business model, guys, and whatever um, you're going to be doing out there, you will always need one most important thing. And this is not, this is what makes every business survive. You're going to need a steady flow of clients and customers. All right. And where you are right now in the, in the halfway through the year, are you attracting the right kind of customer with the right kind of pain that your product or solution is solving? You really need to be looking at that. There's no point in you continuously going through the whole year and not actually reaping any sort of benefits. All right. So that's getting customers and, you know, making sure that you are expanding on your business is the most important thing for you to actually scale and grow your online business. And that is what I tend to teach people that I work with to start, scale, and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable, okay? So this is just, you know, a friendly warning, like I was saying, and, you know, you need to start really looking at where you are right now in comparison to where you said you were going to be and where you're headed. So the more clients you're going to get, the more successful your online venture or your online business is going to be. And without clients, guys, you will not have a business, all right? So just like uh, Ray Ring, I tend to read a fair bit as well. So um, I was reading somewhere, I put a mark on there. All right, there is such a thing called business literacy. And in any case, you want to read this book, um, Leader um, The Leader as the Communicator by Robert May and Alan um, Ackerson. There's a part in there that talks about business literacy. I'm just going to read that a little bit. It says, organizational history. Where has your company been? What's your story? Okay, industry and market trends. What's actually happening in the arena that you're playing in? Are people actually making money using the strategies that you're using or nobody else is? Because if nobody else is, it's time to go back to the drawing board and see what's actually working, all right? Customer profiles. 
Um, who are your customers and what do they want? Are you actually providing your customers with what they want this this time around? Okay, you've been doing it for the last six months. Are you actually delivering a service that people actually want? Okay, and also the things that you really got to look at. Um, new customers won and those that you have lost during this time. Why did the new customers come in and why did those ones that left go? You need to make sure that you, you are aware of that because this is now the time to actually check what's working and what's not working. Stuff that's not working, you ditch that dodo. And stuff that's working, you keep doing it, all right? Performance indicators, all right? How's your financial performance? What do customers think and feel about your business? And what about the investment that they're going to do tomorrow? Are they asking for more products? Are they asking you for more services? Okay. And your employees, what is the feedback you're getting from these employees? This is the time to check all these things, guys. You know what I mean? It could be time moving, but if you are not really measuring anything in your business, that's the reason why you're not growing. That's the reason why your business is stagnant at the moment. Okay. The cost of doing your business by now, you should be knowing what are your lead generation costs all right and how are you actually making the profit the people that you're bringing into your business are you converting them and are you actually making a profit from those people this is june guys halfway through 2017 you should be able to answer these questions and the competition what are you up against who is your competition and who do you have to worry about or who should you not worry about Okay, by now you should know this. You've been doing the business since the beginning of the year. You should know who you're up against. All right. And then other topics. What technology has changed within your industry? And what about, you know, the regulations? What has changed in the time from the beginning of the year and up to now? And what is not going to change up until the end of the year? So guys, all these questions, that's the business literacy. And when you're going online, it's not any different. You've got to know what you're up against. You've got to know what your competition is doing. You have got to know why your customers are coming to you. There's no point in just throwing out ads at them and not realizing what is actually making them convert with those ads and what is actually making them, um, you know, become long lasting customers. All right. So sometimes we turn away you know, business when it comes to us. Um, I run a digital marketing business, by the way, where we help uh, small to medium businesses to start, scale, and grow um, using digital marketing services like your SEO, AdWords, and all that stuff, all right? Um, Ray says, tech is always changing in the print on demand. Well, if you are knowing what's happening, obviously it doesn't really change uh, you know drastically but when it when it changes you got to make sure that you are already ahead of your competition you already know what's cost effective and you already know where you need to go that way you stay in business you stay top of mind for your customers and i know you're always you know going out to meet um you know uh, relevant people in the industry so you are in the current trend of what's happening but some people don't really care they just sit and forget um, whatever they put in their business and they don't realize that some of these things are costing them money Some of these things are costing them clients because first impressions matter. Okay, you never know what your clients are getting from Anywhere else. So if you're not checking what the competition is doing if you're not really Considering why your customers are coming to you. What's unique about your product? Then it's gonna be difficult for anyone to actually purchase anything from you in the future for you to be sustainable Okay, so you know, I hope I answered your question there, Ray. You know most of the things that we're sold into to get into this business is either create a six-figure business or a seven-figure income Whatever it is that you bought into my question to you is are you halfway there this year? Obviously, a lot of us are not. So I want to tell you to stop playing with yourself because you just coming and showing up on the internet and not producing results. You are letting yourself down. You're letting, your, you're letting down all the people that are relying on you producing that income. You're letting down everybody else that has got hopes in you to actually achieve anything of substance. Okay, Ray Ring says, well said, I try to stay current, uh, but away from the bleeding edge. <laughs> Great stuff. All right. So whatever you got sold, 
All right, I want to tell you something. The laptop lifestyle, guys, only exists on misleading Facebook ads. All right, um, it's 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 easy to be sold onto. You're gonna get this. You're gonna get this because you know what you want. But obviously, a coach, a consultant, or whatever, they're not gonna deliver um, that per se. You gotta put in the work. They are gonna give you what you need. All right, but you're not gonna get what you want unless you put in the work, all right? So, you know, crafting or creating a six-figure or seven-figure business, whatever you bought into, is is now very pos possible, especially in the last 10 years, or even just the last five years, all right? Because technology has made it easy for us to reach a global market, and there are many more, you know, millionaires now that are being made on the internet. Why not you? So there's certain things that you might not be doing. You're probably hanging around people that are actually killing it on the internet, but you are not. All right? And you know it. And stop playing with yourself now. All right? Because if I can tell you just in the States alone, apparently they say that um, the number of millionaire households by, I think it was 2014 or 2015, I'm not quite sure, there was 9.6 people that were millionaires in the States already. So I think by 2017 now, that number would have doubled. So we now have all of these things. You know, we've got technology. Um, we've got all the resources. We've got the mentorship. We can actually research a lot of this stuff on Google. And it's becoming easier and easier than it was for people in the past. But sadly, guys, I really know that most of us are not even going to reach even making 50000 um, you know, a, a year You doing what you're doing. Or let alone even able to keep a roof above your, your, your head or even pay some bills. We both know that. You and me right now, we know that we've got bills that are hanging somewhere that we can't afford to pay. You know why? Because this whole internet thing is not cut out to what it was. But some people are making money off of it. You know why? Because they're doing things in a certain way and they're putting in the effort and they're actually trying to make a difference. All right. So you really want to assess where you are, where you want to be, and, you know, things will work out for you. Why? Why? Why would I say that? You know what? Because learning is not the problem for most people. It's not the lack of information that is the problem. Information is everywhere. It's information galore. If anything, people are bloated with information right now. All right? But there's ever more needs right now to actually implement that data that we've consumed so much into tangible, actionable strategies that we can utilize to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. All right. So there's, I know on the market right now, there's a lack of real awareness and, and there's a lack of consistent study of what is the right thing to do or what is the sort of right information because it's all mixed with, um, you know, everyone in the, the last era was just pounding the market with content, content, content. We're full up to there with content. But what's now left is for you to actually put in the execution. Execute on that content and make it tangible so that you can have a business that's profitable and, in, and, and enjoyable. All right. So what's now lacking is that consistent execution and implementation. It is what is holding you back. It's not the lack of you not knowing what to do next. You are just not executing. You know, and you're just not executing. And he says discriminatory consumption. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got to choose what influences are coming in. That which comes in, execute. And then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Look at where the day is today. It's the 1st of June 2017. We're never going to have this day ever again. And by, but what does it mean? It means we've traveled a long six months. What have you achieved? What have you at least got? How much sales have you got in your business? Have you moved the needle at least? Stop letting you down. Right, you stop just gobbly gog attending every course or whatever without implementing because the people that are creating these courses they're only going to sell you what you need. You should realize what it is that you want out of that. All right, it's not the problem of the course creator or anything, it's you, you are letting you down.
All right. So m most of us are, you know, consuming all this information and, and you really must put these ideas and strategies into constant practice and just keep repeating those actions until they become a habit and almost, you know, automatic. I don't think we're doing much because you know what? My clients, most of them, they come to me when they've tried everything. And when somebody says, I've tried it all and it didn't work, I look at them and I said, what did you do? Do you know what I mean? So you, you really want to summarize a few key ideas and really sharpen your perspective and then take more intelligent action, guys. Because look at the days. This is June already. Before we know it, it's going to be the end of the year. So there's a lot of reasons why most of us are not going to be successful. And I just figured out a few ways that we can maybe nip it in the bud right now. I'm just going to probably come up with maybe five or so reasons why you're actually not being successful and what maybe we can both do to have to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. There's no reason, there's no need for you to stop being with your family right now and pretend that you're, you're doing stuff when you're not doing anything. All right. Hey, uh, Trish, and congratulations for Tam's um, um, uh, graduation. It, it really took me back, and uh, <laughs> and congratulations to you for having raised the winner there, uh, Trish. Today we're just talking about you know what's really uh, stopping people from um, from the success that they turn out the, that they want, and what's standing in between them and actually getting the success that they uh, should be getting. Okay, so one of the things that I find with the clients that I deal with is most of them really want to focus on perfection and they're not experimenting enough. All right. The thing is, we are looking at our work 24 seven. And what is actually happening is we are not putting our work to the market. The market is the only people that are going to decide whether they want our product or not. Okay, so stop seeking perfection. You know what I mean? A lot of people wanting to, 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 to be perfect in whatever they're doing. They're losing a lot of money and leaving a lot of money on the table. You know, by the time, you know, somebody who is successful has tried and tested at least eight different experiments, we're still focusing on one piece of content or one piece of video we want to put out there. And people have already engaged with the other person or already paid, um, you know, the other competitor. You know why? Because he just put stuff out. Stop waiting for that time that it's going to be perfect. You know what? It's June the 1st today. And if you've been waiting on something since the 1st of January, look at how much time you've wasted. Do you know what I mean? So some people ha had an idea at the beginning of the year that, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, start this business or whatever. And they still haven't gone to market yet. Because they're waiting for that perfect graphic to look perfect. Uh, Trish, I'm talking about you. And, and you know, because you would have clients that want things in a perfect way. And it's, it's, I know it's annoying. You know, maybe you only had two of, maybe you only had two ideas. And if you would have put them out on the market, one of them would have worked and would have started paying you back so that you can now support the other idea. The point here is we're, we're being paralyzed by wanting too much perfection and we're, we're not testing enough with the market. We're not testing enough with the people that actually pay us to, you know, support our ideas. All right. So you want to really test your crazy ideas, no matter how crazy they may sound. The market is the one that has to decide. Do you know what I mean? You just got to try them out. Find out the ones that are going to work and then optimize, you know, how effective they actually are. Test and learn, test and learn and all the variations. Break it if you can by yourself and find out what is actually working. Ideas are just a dime a dozen, guys. Look at the date today. It's the 1st of June. All right. That means six months have gone by. What have you achieved? Are you anywhere closer to your goals right now? Or are you still back where you started when you got drunk and you made so many resolutions? All right. So half the time, a few of us really want to think things through, but sometimes eh, it's okay. But, you know, the market is the one that has to decide. You know, a lot of our missed opportunities, guys, are for entrepreneurs that are, you know, you know, preparing for or predetermining what they actually want. And they don't quite know where it is that they want to head out to. So seek out a mentor, seek out somebody that can help you out. Because to be truly productive, guys, you also have to be 
clear on where you want to go. All right, I know this might sound a bit um, not playing for me. I'm not sure what's happening there uh, for you. Yeah, it might sound a bit opposing to what I just said, but you know what? Once you know where you are heading to, just keep testing and learning and testing your stuff because right now time is not waiting for you guys. All right. So at the end of the day, once you have this really big grand idea, truly productive people that I know, they would reverse engineer where they want to be. All right. And then, you know, once you have that big goal and the market is supporting your idea, everything becomes clear to you. It becomes easy. You now know what your customers actually want. Instead of you sitting on your idea for 500 days and then eventually when you put it to the market, nobody wants it or your competition has already dimmed it, you know, or done it and they've, you know, not liked it. Do you know what I mean? So it's 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 um it's one of those things that you really got to do guys i saw the date today and i was like whoa time to reflect and i bet a few other people haven't really done uh most of that okay the other thing that's really stopping people from getting stuff done is because we're holding on to most of the work when i asked the question earlier i was like what is the one thing that would help you double your business. Most of us never learn intelligent delegation. All right. You see, getting others to do something as well or better than yourself is one of the hardest aspects that I've noticed with with a lot of leaders, you know, because we have started doing these things. We, we don't think anyone else can do it better than we can. But it's going to be necessary if you really want to grow your business or even get your first ten thousand dollars a month guys you know before you you actually start knowing what needs to be done you gotta i mean before you start you know getting a lot of momentum know what needs to be done and then quickly delegate it all right and make sure you can build a team you can get stuff done for five bucks guys i mean obviously some of those things that really need your 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 quality of work now if you can get somebody to pay you for that i mean to, to you can get to pay somebody for that now think to yourself have i been just you know doing five dollar jobs instead of really concentrating on the bigger scheme of things all right so once you actually determine what's important to you and what your values are you know just put them in writing and then just you know, start looking at an operational way of doing it and then give it out to somebody else. Yeah, you're right. You just need to systemize your work and then um, internalize those values and, and, you know, make sure that your team understands that. All right. Uh, Ray says I could learn better delegation. <laughs> now, seriously, man, because there's so many things that we we constantly are doing and, you know, we're not really scrapping the surface of the bigger picture because we're holding on to smaller jobs. And now it's probably the the, the 1st of June and you haven't done much. All right. So, I mean, it's going to be hard to find somebody as perfect as you. But you know what? You got to look out for the people that are more intelligent than you to help you uh, do do the most of the jobs. So when you actually delegate a task, make sure that the person that you're hiring is clear on their defined role. They is clear on what your company should represent. And it's just, you know, yeah, just be overly a nice person so that you can also attract really nice employees. It's not employees, but, you know, uh, per project, you know, um, outsourcing people, you know. And some, some entrepreneurs that I work with, they have a problem of hiring very fast or some of them hire very, very slow. Now, it should be the opposite, guys. You need to make sure that you know what's supposed to be done and then just delegate it so that you move a little bit faster. All right. That's the reason why most of these things are not really being done um, at the time that they're supposed to be done. You know why? Because we are just concentrating on jobs that are not meant for us. All right. And, and when it comes to that as well, when it comes to, cheers, man, when it comes to that, most most of us entrepreneurs, we are actually doing the wrong sort of trade um, with our time and money there. All right. People that are actually making it big. They realize that you will never become wealthy trading time for money. 
We all know that, right? You can never become wealthy trading time for money because you know why? You can only do so much with the 24 hours that you have. So it's okay maybe when you're starting out, but at some point you're going to have to focus on scaling and leverage. That's where true delegation comes in. And um, you, you, we all know that you'll be fighting an uphill battle if you, you know, you're trying to do um, big accounts or big money while you're trading time for for um for money all right so being paid at an hourly rate stop all that we all know that it's not going to get you anywhere you won't get six figures or seven figures you know only doing more more stuff than you did you know the last year but at the end of the day make sure you delegate the stuff that is not worth your time all right so you want to focus on the power of leverage and how to actually create consistent income without trading time for money all right so there could be a few possibilities maybe you can invest in the right people that can work within your business or oh, there's other things that are happening courses guys uh, membership sites partnerships affiliate uh, marketing and different types of programs will make you you know expand and reach out to as many people as possible without you just using the time that you have as leverage for earning an income, all right? So you wanna take time to really analyze if you're actually maximizing the use of your time without, um, it dropped up for me. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gone. And Mary, how are you? Cheers for tuning in. So you wanna take time to actually analyze if you're actually maximizing your time to the best um, you know, of, 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 of advantages. If you're trading your time for money, make 100% sure that it's an intelligent trade. All right, make 100% sure it is actually worth your time to be engaging with that particular thing. There's so many things that you can automate. There's so many things that you can delegate. There's so many things that you can not do or not even bother about that. It's as simple as that, guys. All right, that's many reasons why a lot of people are not really moving the needle. And now it's, a, it's halfway through the year and you haven't really done much or even really scrap the surface to the kind of income you wanted or you promised yourself at the beginning of the year. All right. So entrepreneurs that actually understand the power of leverage, they actually are scaling their businesses and becoming millionaires by bringing more value to the marketplace than most of their competitors. That's why some people seem to be able to be on YouTube. Uh, they seem to be able to be on Instagram, on Facebook, Facebook Live like this because they have delegated most of this work on their blogs and creating a perfect um, online brand that seems seamless. You know why? Because they are on top of their time, they're on top of their delegation, and they do what is important and what's really needed off of them. You can't be everything to everyone, guys. That's just one of those things. And at the end of the day, guys, make sure whatever you're going to be doing is focused. Follow one course until successful. So that's what I wanted to say, guys. I just noticed that, look at this, we are almost getting to the end of, um, we're almost getting to the beginning of the next half of the year, all right? So what you really wanna do is make sure that you're providing value to the market, you are there, you're present, and you're actually doing stuff that you promised yourself you're gonna do. Because you know what, at the end of the day, is going to happen and you're going to have only you to blame. All right. I've had several opportunities, guys, to, to actually get inside the minds of some of the richest people that I know around the city, uh, have drinks with them or talk to them and sit down. And there's been a lot of timeless lessons that I've learned from them, guys. And it's just really a simple statement. All right. Court, um, Sometimes it's just a really simple uh, statement that they, they, they can say, but what I can tell you right now is leverage. Make sure you are doing the things that actually bring you the most income. If it's not paying you right now and if it's not really paying you and you don't need to be doing it, delegate. All right. There's so many places you can do that. Um, you can outsource most of the work so that you are seriously really moving your company or your business forward. All right. So, so just become aware of what's holding you back um, from elevating your business to the next level. You know, adjust your thinking, your actions and your strategies and just really focus on where you want to go, guys. All right. So, you know, for you to 
execute flawlessly on the you know the tactics that i just talked about there you want to make sure that you are in it for the long haul all right so if you're just a one click wonder and you're just going to do it just because it's paying the bills now well it's probably not going to work but i'm confident that by doing these things that i just mentioned you'll soon see that you know your 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 business is going to grow you're going to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and you now have a clearer vision of what is expected of you and what your clients actually want okay so at the end of the day this was my uh drop on the first of june because it just came to a realization that we are losing time and we're, we're not getting it back. So you want to make sure you're doing things that are actually relevant to your business and things that will actually move you forward. In any case, if you really want something that is going to help you guys, you know how to get the blueprint. It's going to help you reach out to the right kind of people, send the right kind of content to them and convert them while you connect with them. Because without clients, your business is not even going to grow. All right. In the meantime, I really hope you're going to enjoy the rest of your week. I'll probably catch you guys tomorrow again. Thanks for your time now.